everyone, it's me, Axe Kid Events. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post new doll related videos almost every single day. And today's video, I'm so excited because we are going to be doing an unboxing and review of the Disney limited edition 25th anniversary Mulan doll that was released, I think, a few weeks ago at the Disney stores. I ordered her online. I'm not sure if she's still available, but if she is, I will link her in the description. And I'm really excited because this is actually my first limited edition Mulan doll. And one of my big goals is to have one of each princess and I'm only two away from completing that goal now and I'm really excited about this one. I think she's really cool and it's a shame that she didn't really get a whole lot of fanfare around her release so let's see if she's an underrated gem. So the back of the packaging has the film logo and looks pretty cool. This doll resold for $150. I don't know what's going on with Shop Disney right now. I think they are being weird with the Disney Ellie's because they're releasing them without really saying anything they've upped the price they're not really advertising them a whole lot it's very weird i don't i'm worried about the future of these dolls because i actually really like them and i will be very sad if they discontinue this line um but i don't know that's just me speculating because it's weird that they're not really announcing them anyway uh the back of the box says disney artists are proud to present this limited edition mulan doll in celebration of the film's 25th anniversary our fierce warrior is ready to make a hero out of you but first she must see the matchmaker which that's the part of the movie that this dress is from i really wish that we had gotten the green dress especially because that's the one they're using in the promo art for the 25th anniversary stuff but it's fine um i do like the pink dress a lot i think it's really cool um draped in a hanfu a traditional chinese robe mulan knows her path is not one of convention and expected custom she brings honor to her family and culture by disguising herself as a man and going off to battle it's on the battlefield that mulan's bravery claims its reward of gratitude from the emperor and honor for her family collectors and fans alike can take part in the magic with a specialty doll that's just as magnificent and inspiring as mulan and i'm very surprised by this one because um, i'm just gonna start opening her i love the little bow on the back like i'm not the biggest fan of this packaging i think it's kind of boring and hard to keep nice um especially if you unbox her doll but i mean there's cute features like this is adorable um so let's undo the bow also i can never tie that bow well again i think there's some people on this earth that can tie bows uh like in a pretty way and some that can't and it's your fate like you can't intervene <laughs> anyway i'm very surprised by this one because in my like uh, to my understanding milan is a reasonably popular character and they only made four thousand in this doll i think they made 45 12 yeah can someone tell me what the heck is up like why why that number that is a hyper specific number am i maybe it's like really obvious and i just am missing something i don't know um packaging is very cute i like the flowers on the sides of the plastic um some patterning cool and then i get this part out and let's see what number i got i got number 391 i cover it because people will sometimes like take pictures of other people's like because this isn't something you could reverse image search on google right because it's in a video and then people will use this to like scam others so i just cover it but it's 391 Ooh. Um, cool. and yeah so these boxes are just a lot of pieces and they're like awkward to put back together and stuff anyway so the way i open these dolls is i just take what we're dealing with here and i cut the rubber bands from the front and and also the little plastic ties and stuff you just have to be really careful with some of them like i wish they would stop doing this but they do plastic look this is satin satin fabric like will snag really really bad really easily and they put plastic tea ties through the satin uh so often you'll get a doll that you just got like fresh out of the factory and there's a giant snag through the front so you need to be really careful with these but basically just come in and snip them and you're good all right let's switch to timeline unfortunately there were a lot of plastic tea ties on this one thankfully i got lucky and there were no snags on the dress there's just little holes that i can steam out so uh hopefully that's the case with other people who unbox their dolls so i'm already a bit conflicted i'll reserve my final judgments for the end of this video after i've gone over each detail in detail but with some of the materials on this doll i'm so like oh my gosh this is so soft and high quality and as i was unboxing her i was really surprised by how soft and nice her hair is and all these like impressive details that she has but then other details on her feel extremely cheap and lazy and poorly done uh, so I'm, I'm kind of on the fence here. So we're going to get started and look into each detail individually uh, so I can make my final assessment. It's just that like here, oh my god, like unbelievable, incredible doll. Here, 
I threw up in my mouth a little bit. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's get started. As always with my reviews, I want to start with the face because ultimately the face is one of the most important features to me on a doll. It changes everything for me. And okay, so the face, I read rumors that they reused a face sculpt that had a completely different expression on it. And that the expression was sculpted into the face. And I thought like, okay, I think people are exaggerating. But no, it's actually extremely noticeable and really weird. So you can see the brow is like sculpted to have, you see, you see what I'm talking about? These like bulges? It's cause her brows, I believe it's from the designer doll from the Ultimate Princess Celebration. Her eyebrows are like down. Uh, so she definitely, gives off a strange expression but I don't mind her actual face and expression I think she looks very pretty I think she looks a lot like the character but I will say that I showed this to my fiance like I showed this doll to him uh, and I was like look how pretty she just came in the mail and he was like who is this supposed to be this does not look like Mulan uh so let me know if you have that same feeling and why I guess I'm very used to dolls and how Mulan looks in doll form but I'd be very curious and I'll bring over some of my other Mulan dolls so that we can compare her to them uh but very interesting that they seem to have used the designer face that has the sculpted in parts because there was a 17 inch Mulan but maybe that doll also had the eyebrow expression thing I don't know I'm just so grateful she doesn't have one eyebrow raised up higher than the other because oh my god we have been so cursed with that and anything that's not that will make me happy <laughs> um I really like the makeup that they did she has this really pretty two-toned gold makeup with a sparkly gold on the lid and underneath and then a brown um just over top of that oh no is it the same color oh okay I see what happened um there's like a lid line that's brown but all of the makeup is actually the same color sorry at this angle look it actually the shine of the paint makes it look like two different colors that is really pretty and I really like the way her eyelashes are done they're really like delicate and pretty sometimes the Disney Ellie's especially the designer dolls which are the 12 inch doll line by the way um have like really thick eyelashes that look a little silly I think these are fantastic really love her nose shape and her lip shape and the subtle blushing I think this is a really beautiful face um, but I know that it is divisive because of the eyebrow thing. And then this is some hair gel from her bangs, so don't worry about that. I can just wash that right off. Uh, she has a little bit of a side bang swept. And then, okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a hair comb, right? Uh, she's got a hair comb in her hair. It's tied in place, but I feel like if you undid the tie, there would be no way to make that stay in because that's a comb it's supposed to be stuck into her hair right so even though they've tied it into place they didn't bother to do that and i think it's because it just absolutely would not stay but that's so disappointing because how weird is it to just tie a comb to your hair it's it's supposed to be stuck in there uh that's a little weird i feel like they definitely could have done it i want to untie it and try to get it to stick in there but i'm scared because clearly there's a reason they didn't try that right i don't know um and then she has some hair pulled off to the side and secured underneath to hide it and her hair disney store dolls are like enigmatic to me with their hair type because when i was younger they used this hair fiber that i thought was nylon and it's always been very soft and pleasant um but i've been being told that it's not nylon um and mulan in particular always had like really soft nice hair and this feels like that but um i'm not sure what the fiber is there's conflicting reports but i will say that in this particular case, I was very surprised at how soft this hair felt. And I really like how blunt her hair is cut. I think they kind of messed up because there's some like weird spots sticking out, but I can fix that because a blunt cut is easy to fix. Um, but it looks really, really pretty um, the way it is like that, uh, especially because she like cuts her hair with a sword and stuff in the movie. I don't recall if at this particular moment she does that, but isn't that cute? I think that's so cute. All right. Moving on, we get to look at the outfit, which, oh my god, this outfit is incredible in parts. Uh, first of all, I want to see how many separate pieces we're dealing with here. With Disney limited edition dolls, generally, they have a lot of different pieces because it just makes the construction easier, so um, that's always good. Interesting! It's one piece. That is so unusual and appreciated, honestly, uh, because oftentimes if they're two pieces, they'll like twist and be weird with each other. And then this... Um, is actually tied into place right here so um, that's really nice though I appreciate that it's all one piece and then the fact that this is a separate piece really helps sell the construction of the garment because this is how these actually are right like you have the I don't know what this would be called in a Hanfu situation but the belt 
thing. Sorry, I don't want to like guess what a cultural item is called and be wrong because uh, I think that would be disrespectful. But um, this piece is usually like a totally separate piece that you apply after you've put on the entire outfit. So um, really, really nice. And it just really, really beautiful. So we're going to go over some details. So first we have the neckline, which has this really gorgeous ruffly bit here. And you can see um, I'm actually not super familiar with how this looks in the movie because I'm just so used to the dolls and how much they simplify this outfit. So it's really refreshing to see it with all these details. And I would have to double check what it looks like in the movie, honestly. But these dolls do take a lot of creative liberties to make the dresses super like interesting and elevated in their like quality and design. Um, these Disney limited edition dolls, the reason I really like them is because they'll take the movie design and amp it up and try to make it more um, like detailed and fun so th this is very likely very inaccurate but in a positive way i guess uh, i really like the fabric they used here it's really soft it's really pleasant um really nice high quality fabric there and then this um the rest of the outfit is made out of what i think might be some type of satin and i'm not sure if it's part of the design or not but it's got these like what looks like snags running through you see that and I don't know if that's intentional, because I, I imagine in the movie that the dress is meant to be made out of something akin to a silk fabric, uh, which definitely wouldn't have these runs through it. And like, look here. They don't look intentional to me. Those fully look like uh, they picked a horrible fabric for what they were trying to achieve here. I don't know. Let me know if you are super familiar with fabric. Is that on purpose? I imagine it is not. I really like the trim here. It's this really deep royal purple with these little rhinestones and these golden details in it. I really like the way that they've used gold to draw together a bunch of the different pieces of the outfit. So you've got it on the trim here. You've got it on the bow tails. I know that's not the term for those, but something like that. The sleeves, the little comb, her makeup. Like, it's really, really nice. And um, so, like I showed earlier... The trim actually goes all the way down, which is really nice. And then if we move this piece, so they've used a lot of these tea ties. These super thin ones, I don't mind as much because they don't uh, impact the fabric too much, but we're going to untie that really fast. I love how many Disney dolls, by the way, have been coming with these shawl things recently because they are so much fun to play with on display. Um, you can like do all sorts of different little poses and stuff. And um, her sleeve, I, I appreciate the simplicity of these because I feel like a lot of Disney Ellie's, they try, Ellie being limited editions, uh, they'll try too hard to have a bunch more details to look more expensive, as opposed to doing something more toned down that actually matches the character and overall fits the doll better, I guess. Uh, so we have just some little stars with gold and a few rhinestones here and there. And, and then on the sleeve that is open, draping downwards, towards the body. Just this absolutely beautiful embroidery. I love the way that they did the flowers. And here's a little symbol. And then on the back, everything is there as well. Looks really, really nice. Again, I'm concerned about these snags. I really don't think those are intentional. And that would be a huge blunder if those really are not intentional. I mean, maybe it's supposed to look like a dress that's like been worn before or something. I have no idea. Maybe it's intentional, but it does not look intentional to me as the consumer. And then we're going to put her this piece back on and take a look at it. So this is a really nice piece. Every detail on this is really high quality and pleasant. Uh, really, really thick, nice fabrics that they used. I'm not actually sure what fabrics they are. Really nice, though. Uh, so I love this blue color. Perfect. Same color as this, even though this is a satin, which I really appreciate when there's good color matching like that. And I love the pink color of Mulan's dress with the, like, really deep blue that they use in the design. So I really like that they actually pulled that off here. And the really good contrast with the red there. I love the little white line there. I think that's, like, a full... Oh, interesting. It's between the two sides. Wow. Huh. I think, yeah, so there's a lining fabric. This isn't the same fabric as the outside. So this feels like a high quality satin. I think that's what this material is. Um, and then there's another high quality satin for the white. And look what they've done. You can see kind of what's going on here. They folded that in half and then sewed it into place in some cool way where you can't even see 
Wow, that's a really detailed, interesting piece. So that there wouldn't be stitch lines, because you don't want stitch lines on that particular piece, because it's supposed to look like a ribbon that would be tied, I think. Um, that is cool. And then we've got this rope here with these little delicate bows on them. And the bows are really, really nice too. They really put a lot of effort into this part of the outfit. Check this out. So the little bows are actually, they're not just one piece of ribbon, right? Like it's it's satin that has been sewn into the shape of the bows, which is really, really nice. It makes them thicker. It makes them lay in an interesting way. Really like that. I don't like this. Is that supposed to be there? Or if I cut that, is that what they want? Do they want it to drape more? I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look at the promotional images of this doll and uh, verify that. I love the way the little beads look here. Really nice choices for the beads. They're not like super expensive glass beads or anything, but they really give off what I think they're trying to give off. I think they look very nice and high quality. And then this is not cold to the touch, so it's not an actual metal piece, but it looks very, very nice. I mean, it could be an actual metal, just like a very like thin metal, but it looks beautiful, and I love the little rhinestone. It's just an extremely delicate pretty piece and then down here you've got this like fluted bead it's got like holes in it it's very interesting and tassels hanging out and moving all the way down just very very pretty a lot of detail here and then we also have the hangy blue things coming out from under the red detail here so these are awesome these are really really cool i love when they find a detail on the outfit to sneak embroidery onto in a classy way um disney also really loves doing this exact thing where it's just a big triangle and they've folded it into this exact pattern <laughs> they love it they love this z shape uh, but look at this with the gold embroidery with the red and i love the rhinestones the way they almost blend in at certain angles they blend in pretty much perfectly that is really really nice and i just love this blue color it's beautiful it's beautiful beautiful this might just be like a specialty satin to be honest with you because of the it's the texture of the fabric is quite different than satins that i'm used to um and then down here you can see that as well and it is the same on both sides all right i am not going to be untying these or like undoing the little plastic ties but you can see that there's little tea ties i undid most of the tea ties but i want to leave those ones in place but you can see that there is an asymmetrical red layer here that is meant to mimic a brocade fabric but it's extremely thin i don't mind that because this is a doll so you don't want to use like really heavy textile fabrics unless it's somewhere like the um this piece up here where it actually works and doesn't make things awkward on the doll so i totally respect the fabric decision just know like it oh the tea tie just popped right out. Um, very thin, but it looks pretty nice. I don't anticipate any issues, and you can see that there is patterning built in. It's nice. I like the color of it. I think it matches well. Um, definitely more of a pink red than this red up here, but it's not immediately obvious unless you're specifically like, do these reds match? Uh, but this has more of like a scarlet or an orange to it. Um, in the movie, I do believe if this is even there, I don't remember. I don't feel like this is actually a detail in the movie. Double check that. Um, but I'm sure it was probably more pink. Okay, now this is heinous. And this is actually not that uncommon with Disney Ellie's. This is one cheap, thin layer of satin. It's not even a nice satin. Uh, maybe it's like a mid-grade satin. It's not the worst you can get, but it's definitely not even close to the best you can get. This is terrible. It is so thin. It lays stupid. It has all these wrinkles in it right out the gate that you're going to have to steam out. If you try to iron satin, it will melt. Don't do it unless you really know what you're doing. Um, and look how terrible the trim is at the bottom. Uh, and it's just because it's such a thin fabric and it's difficult to do a trim on this sort of thing. And I can prove to you how cheap this satin is because satin is a fabric that unravels pretty easily. But even me who buys specifically cheap fabric to work with, not like the cheapest fabric, but pretty cheap fabric when I'm making costumes, my satin never unravels this badly. Look at this. It's terrible. I do not know what they were thinking when they picked this fabric. I feel like this is actually thinner than the satin that they use for the like regular Disney store dolls. It's heinous. And there's so much quality to the rest of this dress that I'm speechless at how bad this is. And because the Disney store dolls are, uh, they, they cost cut in this really annoying way. Almost every single one has this. Even like the most expensive, nicest ones will have this. Um, other than the only one I could think of 
off the top of my head. I think Saks Fifth Avenue Cinderella even has this, but the Giselle D23 doll actually has something of a petticoat under her dress. But anyway, they just put tissue paper under there. And if you're going to do one thin layer, which makes sense, she does have one thin layer of fabric here. I would excuse it if the fabric wasn't so cheapy feeling. And they've used, I believe, this exact color of fabric and this exact satin on the uh, Rapunzel from 2011. I'm pretty sure this is the fabric they used, actually. And it snags horrifically. It's really bad. Um, but if you're going to use just tissue paper underneath on a thin layer like this, look how it's like bulbous and awkward. And I haven't taken this tissue paper out at all yet, but I'll show you if you take the tissue paper out. Well, now it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. In the movie, I don't recall it like doing all this. And this doll was $150, I need to remind you. I'm not super picky with dolls. I also understand this doll was made in a very low quantity, like a weirdly low quantity. So I understand that the cost per doll will rise quite a bit, but this is like unacceptable for a doll that's $150 because ultimately, yes, the company has to make profit, whatever, but the consumer also needs to, um, you know, get a product that they like. And this is like, I can see this being a huge deal breaker for a lot of people. I do not know what was going on with this. Uh, <laughs> I need to double check in the movie because maybe it really is just like a very flowy dress like this, but I don't recall it being that way. I don't know. And then I was surprised by this. I don't know if these are new shoes because I do not Oh, I left the little tie on. Sorry. Uh, they tie the feet to the stand like this for packaging. Um, I do not have the other 17 inch Mulan and I don't normally watch reviews of dolls that I don't have because it makes me sad. Um, dolls that I don't have that I actually want that I'm not conflicted about. Um, so these might be shoes that were used on her, but I really like these. Aren't these cool? And she has articulated ankles. She's got the same body as most of the other Disney Ellie's. But these are cool. If these are a new sculpt, that is gr greatly appreciated. We don't have a whole lot of plastic accessories on this doll. Not that there should have been. Um, it's just the shoes and the comb. But I do believe they're both new sculpts, which is cool. But again, the shoes might not be new. They might not be new. Okay, I'm going to bring over a couple of other Mulan dolls so we can like take a look at things. All right, I just double checked and I want to clarify. So in the movie, this is actually a light purple, which is interesting. I actually didn't go over this very much, but it's, you know, it's a piece of fabric that they draped. But I love it. And it is hemmed beautifully, by the way, because this is a really difficult fabric to hem. Uh, we'll get to the sword. I kind of forgot to show it to you. This does actually flow behind her in the movie, so I guess it's fine. Um, it looks a lot better once you, like, really play around with it for the display. I still think the fabric should have not been this cheapy. Um, and the reason for that is that, yes, I like the way that it's flowing, but it's gonna snag really bad. And I was comparing it to a doll whose fabric is particularly awful. I bought this doll secondhand, by the way. These snags were not because of me. But this, same color, this is actually a much nicer satin, and it's really hard to convey that to you. This one is also lined fully and has another liner um, underneath, which is impressive. But I don't know if you can tell, but this is, I don't know if it's a higher thread count or what, because it just feels silkier and softer and nicer. And this feels like extremely, extremely cheap. And this is actually like the same situation going on here where it's actually fully lined too. Um, but it's, and I also bought this one secondhand. You can see the snags in it. Um, I try my best not to get mine snagged. I only have one, to my knowledge, that has a really bad snag. That was my fault. Kind of. It was the packaging, but anyway. Um, I really wish that they had used this fabric, this really nice satin. It would have flowed just like they want to. I mean, this is double layered and it's flowing that way, like the way that you would want it to, right? Um, so I, I really do not understand this decision. Really don't get it. Um, Oh, also, uh, I went and looked at the movie. The Disney princess, Disney princess Mulan character, which is separate from this, the Disney princesses are their own, like, thing, but um, she d she doesn't have this piece, but in the movie she does actually have that piece. Dress is very different in the movie from what the Disney princess icon character looks like, by the way. Um, I haven't seen Mulan in a few years, excuse me. Um, okay, so now let's look at the sword. So... It is tied to her hand. She's not going to be able to hold this if you untie it, um, untie the rubber band. And it's actually quite nice. I really like that they did a dry brushing type of technique to add um, a bit of black paint to make it look a little bit older and have a bit more shading to it. So it's not just like that flat blue color. I think that looks really nice. And the sculpt is really nice here too. I love this. This is the hilt. I don't know. Is this also part of the hilt? I don't know. The part where the sword pops out of, this is cool. I don't know if this sword had a particular like 
obvious design in the movie like this or if this was done by the limited edition designers but look how cool this sword is it's really nice and the paint that it's painted with makes it look a bit aged which this is like a family heirloom sword if i recall correctly so i like that i think that's really really nice and okay i wanted to compare her to my like disney princess mulan doll um, which is this one so this is my i believe the 2013 or the 2014 just classic doll so this one was ten dollars uh i will say and this is mind-blowing to me i do believe this is still a cheaper satin but i like the way it sits better i don't like the color i think this color is better um but i think this sits nicer and i believe this doll also had come with the tissue paper under her dress i just took it out at some point and you can see like this is not actually a belt thing it's just kind of a weird design on the dress um and I was shocked that this one has that blue, that light blue. She actually has it. And then um, neither of these have the right hair. Uh, in the movie, she does take her hair down, so this is more correct. But I don't think it's ever in a side ponytail. It's in a bun. So I don't really know what this is supposed to be, but it's cute. Um, I've had this doll since I was 13, so or 14. End of 2013, I was 14. Um, anyway, then we have... This is the original 2011 designer Mulan doll. I bought her second, or no, I got her new in box actually. So my bad, this probably was me, unless she was packaged that way, I don't know. Watch the review. <laughs> um, so the designer dolls are not meant to be movie accurate, so please ignore the dress in every way, but you can look at the faces here. This one's meant to be like hyper glam, so quite different, but very beautiful. I love the face on this doll, I love her. The original run of designer dolls is so cool. I only have three of them so far, but I think they are so fantastic. And several girls of mine are in that line. Uh, but this doll retailed for $80, but that was back in 2011. So obviously inflation has changed things, but um, the materials here, I really wish this doll had used something more like this. Um, and then we have, um, I just wrote, brought Rapunzel over for that part that I was showing you earlier so she's not relevant here and she is a mess right now please excuse her okay so I believe that this is the doll that allegedly they have reused the face sculpt from for this doll I don't mind reuse the face sculpts to be clear if it fits but if it's true that this doll is not supposed to have this expression at all and they've used the sculpt Okay, yeah, I do actually think... I'm not super good with face sculpts. I don't know, it's just something my brain cannot compute. So please excuse me if I'm off base here. But I've also heard other people say this. But look, I do see that brow ridge situation. And it's because she has that stupid raised eyebrow that I can't stand. Um, but one of them's furrowed. And it seems like in the sculpt, both brows are furrowed in the sculpt. Um, and here you can see that same thing going on here. Why why did they do that uh yeah that's weird especially because they had to i imagine this is a 3d sculpt they had to scale it up and redo it like reprint it or whatever and make it fit for her so why not just real quick like smooth that out a little i don't know that seems really lazy maybe they changed their mind on what the face paint was going to look like on this doll last minute or something i don't know and i really like the expression that they did give her i think it matches her uh vibe at the time in the movie but yeah very very odd choice with the face all right so this was definitely a very conflicted review for me on a disney le i feel like normally i'm like very happy with them and very impressed i never feel like they're worth the money to be clear um I, i'm fully aware that these are like luxury dolls that are priced higher just for the sake of it uh they are made in smaller quantities which kind of excuses it but not really um in this case though she they did not make very many of these like they didn't even make five thousand, which i really want to understand why uh did they just anticipate this one's not doing well? Are they phasing out Disney Ellie's? I don't know. But if they're going to phase them out, there's a few more characters they need to make. So please get on that quickly. <laughs> we also need more Tiana's, please. Like, I want the white dress Tiana. Please. Anyway. <laughs> um, I really like her. I think she's really cool. I think if you're a Mulan fan or if you're trying to collect all the princesses like I am, I think that she is a really good representation of the character. There are huge problems with this doll. I actually think, though, if you have sewing prowess and aren't afraid to bring scissors to the doll um and i might i mean i'll say that i might do this but i'm going to be too scared to do it but honestly like how easy would it be to just take this out and put a new layer in because it's really just a like it's one piece of fabric it would not be too complicated to do this 
um, and just put another one in here because this is just so unacceptably cheap. I don't know. I'm worried about this getting super snagged. Not a collector. They sit on a shelf, right? I use them for photos sometimes, but I'm very careful with them. Um, I mean, they're dolls, but you know. Um, so I do actually really worry about this. I mean, I've had this doll with this very cheapy plasticky satin since, you know, almost 10 years ago or 10 years ago proper even. Um, and you can see there's not actually snags dress does not look particularly like the cleanest or like it's not steamed or anything but it stayed pretty nice but this material though it might be more expensive because this is more plasticky this feels a little bit less plasticky but it's the it's how thin the fabric is and there can be thin fabrics that are high quality I'm not just like equating thick with expensive by any means but it's just I don't I don't like this satin at all and I'm I'm the biggest satin hater in the world but like I, I just cannot stand satin as a fabric but um, I have praise for other areas where satin was used in this fabric like this is genuinely it's just nicer I don't know maybe it's just because they lined it it just feels like a nicer satin uh, but I will say that like I can at least confidently say that like this is a much higher quality nicer satin I don't know uh, if you have this doll, let me know what you think. Is there some detail that I have been, like, harping on that you just do not care about? Uh, or what? I don't know. I feel weird. I'm never this negative, like, repeatedly, but I don't know. It bothered me. And I'm a reviewer, I gotta be honest. Okay, now let's go put her up in my Disney LE lineup. Alrighty, so this is my current setup. And there's a few over here, too. These are princesses that I have two of back here. Um, looking cute. And then these are our inductees. I also got this Elsa, <laughs> who I haven't put up yet. Um, and I don't actually have a lot of pink going on here. I have two main pink dolls, and she's kind of purple. So welcome addition. You are a different color than the others, like your color scheme. Because I like to arrange them rainbow, but there's so much blue. Uh, and then I got a new green, which is exciting, because green is my favorite color. And so far, we've got Tinkerbell and Merida's mom. And I guess the Ariels, but Ariel sits, because I think it's weird to stand a mermaid. Because if you're standing a mermaid and, like, it's with other mermaids, sure, they're underwater, whatever. But, like, next to the others, it's a little weird. Um, but I'm going to set them up now. So I have the flash on, so some of their hair is going to look crazy. But for now, Mulan is a back row girly because her dress was bothering me. But the top looks great. So she's back there, um, kind of separating the white dress on this Snow White from the purple on this Vanessa. That's also a back row girly. So I like that. Looks pretty good. And then... Elsa's also in the back row because she's a double character and that's kind of, that's where the double characters go. Um, now there's anything wrong with that, I just put my favorite ones on like the main display and then the others go here. And it kind of fits because this um, Cinderella kind of has a yellowy dress so we've got like a color transition here. Would have been better for this one to be leading to the blue because she's kind of tealy but um, then that would mess with the thing that's going on here and I like this. Elsa doesn't actually have a stand, so she's just kind of bouncing, so that's why her posture isn't the best. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. Overall, I think this Mulan is really, really nice. I think there's some definite problems more than I would normally say for other Disney LEs. I feel like the, the material choices were questionable. The face sculpt is a little weird, but overall, she's a really, really nice doll. $150 doll? That's nice? Eh, no. But she's nice. <laughs> she's She's fun, and I think she is a good addition to a collection if you're building, like, a collection of them. And I don't think there's anything, like, particularly wrong or awful about the doll or anything. I just think, like, yeah, it's not one of the better Disney Ellie's for sure. Which is a shame, because I've been really looking forward to Mulan. Um, I knew that the 25th was coming this year, so I was like, oh my god, I'm so excited. Uh, so, yeah, but as you can see, um, we've got Satin Overload here, and I hate Satin. But they all have better satins than they used on this poor lady, except probably that Merida. I'm not, I don't remember. I kind of recall hating this one, this, the material they used. Hmm. Yeah, it's not ideal. It's not as bad as this satin, though. Um, yeah. Okay. Goodbye.